ladies and gentlemen, posted like 30 seconds ago. I happened to be online right when they posted this. This is the new update. This is the new major update, official news. We actually got the blog post. They're going to break it all down. Now, in the first paragraph, what they actually end up saying here is it's eternally grateful for the feedback and that we have actually shaped the launch going into the future, uh, which is kind of true. I've actually seen uh, our updates change, like our feedback directly change what's going in the updates myself. Um, so if we go down here and scroll down here, uh, the two lead uh, designers have a video of which we can show us here. Let's go ahead and see what they have to say. Pretty cool cinematic to start. Hey Diablo Immortal players. We're glad you're here as we take you through some of the details of our next major update. Awesome, new major update. I'm Joe Grubb, lead game designer on Diablo Immortal. And I'm Steven Stewart, associate game designer. First, we wanted to recap our commitment to deliver fresh content to you. You can Gotta anticipate fresh content. seeing content updates such as battle pass seasons, in-game events, feature updates, and more. Okay. For this major update, in addition to new gameplay, features, and in-game events, I'm excited to introduce the Silent Monastery. New dungeon. Our first new dungeon. Day Relive the correct. history of the Zachrum Crusades with a new story quest to guide you. This is the cinema that we saw the mist on of the Mountains Chinese of Aim website earlier. To cleanse an ancient temple before its darkness consumes the land. That Speaking of darkness, the dungeon introduces a new mechanic around light and dark. You'll need to ignite the temple statues to oh, have a chance cool. against the nightmare hordes. You put the light and on finally, the light. what's a new dungeon without a terrifying new end boss? Stand toe to toe with the soul of the ancient nightmare itself, kind of like a, a multi-stage and environment-changing battle. Are you ready? It looks pretty good visually. To get geared up for the formidable challenges ahead, I'll pass it over to Steven to share the latest news on items. Okay, before we get into set items, one thing I want to say about dungeons is hopefully there's a little bit of like not very much downtime in it. There's a lot of like uh, invulnerability frames and stuff in the dungeons that hasn't been beta tested. Like Pit wasn't beta tested because the Realm of Damnation was new after beta was already over. So and Pit of English has like the longest animation times of all time. So I'm hoping that because this one wasn't tested too, there isn't the same problem of like huge animation locks. It should be quick to do. Over the last couple of months, we have introduced two rounds of new legendary items for all classes. And we've been That's true. I think the introducing new legendary items is W's because I think the whole point of Diablo is having multiple styles of builds per class. Like if you just have one build that's good per class, it gets boring. Enjoyed seeing how players have theory crafted these items into highly effective builds, bolstering their day to day Some combat, of them have been quite good. Helicray raids, and dungeon runs. However, Mage for this update, we are incredibly excited to shake things up even further by introducing an entirely new set. There are currently set. eight sets in the game that have seen wide use by all players, assuming different roles within their parties and further modifying their preferred playstyle. We believe this new set will only further add to the excitement of hunting upgrades and uncovering new ways to play Immortal. Our new set is called Gloom Guide's Prize okay, and so focuses primarily on skills that we classify yep. as dashes, essentially your movement skills. When so you commit to this set, these movement skills amplify your entrances or escapes up, from speed. battle in both powerful and unique ways, sowing chaos and destruction with every moment of combat. Looks like a That's the latest everything. on items. Joe, what's next for Warbands? This major war update bands. also lets you expand your new Warband castle okay. with a new exploration system, where you'll work through 16 rooms of monsters to find mm. valuable heirlooms to buff your warband against the demons of the hell. Heirlooms. Running explorations through the rooms can be done with two to eight members. And if you reach the final room, additional rewards can be gathered from a boss battle. But that wraps it up. Thanks for joining us for this quick update. We'll see you all in West March. Okay, so there's 16 RNG rooms, it sounds like, with a boss at the end with some rewards. Wow, here's, here is the update. There's a lot to dig in for this update, so let's get going. There's the new dungeon here. Okay, so new dungeon. This is what they just showed the sneak peek of. Level 60 and above can group up in parties of two to four, so it's just like the other dungeons. Um, there's some lore about it. It says the temple statue can be illuminated. That was the light mechanic they showed earlier, so you actually scare people away. It looks like you'll probably have to do the light. That's going to be the thing to continue in the dungeon. 
revenge. And once you've flooded the temple with light, there's only one direction to head. That's the obsidian heart. And then we get the boss. Pretty self-explanatory, pretty simple. Um, let's see. The castle here. Ooh, this is new. We haven't seen this. So castle, Sirangar. Okay. Uh, let's see. Spin Town, Helicory Raid, Room Management, Ancestral Weapons, um, etc. In the outset, oh wait, Ancestral Weapons, Room Management, Helicory Raid, 6 out of 15. 15 man raid? Or maybe that's a total of 15 raids? I'm not quite sure. Um, in the outskirts of the West March lies an ancient fortress rife with unspeakable horrors. Exploration experience will replace Warband Camps, thank God, and introduce two replayable game modes along with passive bonuses that can be upgraded as you secure and defend your castle, okay? And this is interesting. Before moving on to the specifics, we want to introduce large-scale improvements in how Warbands will function. Thank God. Po point of pain for us. Big part of this patch will feature new game modes, unique rewards, and more progressive systems focused on warbands. Okay, so they are going the warband route. Additionally, we want to remove all the major pain points players have exposed about warbands while simultaneously providing better rewards for players who choose to take part. So I think this is a good approach if they actually, not necessarily focusing on warbands so much, but if they incentivize it where like right now the problem is if you do a warband it is both difficult to do and there isn't a huge reason to do it other than just like grinding the small amounts of scoria over time in order to upgrade and get a few combat rating it's really not that impressive i think if they make the rewards significant it could make warbands like worth the effort just like i mean we're still doing dungeons even though we're complaining about dungeons it's worth the effort because the sets are so good so let's see here the requirement to slay monsters with your warband to establish the camp has been removed Wait, the requirement to slay monsters with your warband to establish the camp has been removed. Okay, so you can just star the warband now. Lower the threshold for the raids from eight to four people. This is good. If there's at least four members in the raid from the same warband, the raid can be filled by anyone else. Oh, uh, this is fantastic because this is going to stop us from having to like boot people out of the warband just to get that last guy in. Completing the raid this way will still yield extra warband rewards for the warband members. Okay, so if you have, if you have uh, warband people in there, four plus, you still get bonus rewards. Successfully completing a warband Warband Helicory for the first time. We now grant war members an additional 400% drop rate increase for sealed warband chest. This bonus resets every seven days. Oh, interesting. So they're basically buffing the warband chest by 4x as long as you do your weekly. That's, you know, I actually think I like that because honestly, one of my complaints has been the sealed warband chest is like basically worthless. Uh, it shows up randomly. Like it doesn't show up in any way in which is consistent. It just seems to be like, oh, that's a warband chest. I completely forgot about those. And they also seem extremely bursty. Well, you get like two within like an hour and then you just don't see them for like three weeks. It's the weirdest thing. To begin the quest to bring up the castle under your warband's bearing, you must be at least level 20. Okay, so just some basic requirements to stop botting. Purge the depths of the castle. Okay, let's see what the castle actually is. Because if they are focusing on this castle so hard, it needs to be good. Cool looking screenshot. Upon arriving, warband will realize there's still some unwanted occupants taking up resident. You must purge them from the new home. As you crush, incinerate, and eviscerate your way through the room of undead threats, you'll come across restless spirits that are bound to ride here for all eternity. It's up to you to set them free, severing the connection. Okay, what does this actually mean for game mechanics and cleansing the remnants? Here we go. Each remnant provides unique bonuses that are applied to your character. Okay, so let's see. You can traverse the randomized dark underbelly alone or with up to seven others. So you don't have to do this with a warband. You can do it alone. You can do the castle alone. That is extremely important. I was worried that it was going to be like the Warband Raids where you had to have four people. You can do this alone. Thank God. Okay, uh, room management. Let's see. Resurrect fallen enemies faster. Damage done increased. Critical hit. Uh, hit increases attack speed. Allies restore health. Movement speed. Damage taken reduced. Movement speed increased. Increased block chance. Okay, so... That's interesting that they have two that are the same, Survivor, which is 1.2%, and then Survivor, which is 5%. So obviously there's like different tiers of buffs or something like that. Kitty, please stop going on, on the keyboard. Stop it. Interesting. So there's buffs that it looks like you can apply to rooms. I'm not really, let's see how that goes. Okay, once you've cleared your castle of underwear, additional rooms will become available and your war my members to occupy. Each room has its own variety. I get it. So it's like you unlock, unlock like a bedroom in the castle and your bedroom that is applied to DM, for instance, happen to give me bonus attack or whatever. Um, a player is still unable to assign themselves from a war band um, at any time. Players will receive the benefits of their room as long as they occupy it, but cannot occupy more than one room at a time. Okay, so you got to You got to kind of pick what you have. Got it. 
and the rooms would dictate what the buffs will be. Warband rooms can be upgraded by placing remnants received from purging the depths. Doing so will provide that respective room with additional bonuses. Okay, so we're, we're talking like flat bonuses that looks like it's going to work completely within the game, um, everywhere within the game, essentially. Um, let's see here. Defense of Sire... I'm going to call it Syringar, because that's the closest I can get to it. Kitty, once again, you are not allowed to step on the keyboard. Please stop. Now that your uh, warband has renovated the castle, word has gone back to the ar armies. Uh, defensive of Sangar. Here's the end. This must be the endless fighting mode. Standard mode can be played once a week. In this mode, players must withstand eight waves of bloodthirsty demons. If your warband successfully staves off Hellspawn, you receive rewards and experience for holding the line. Rewards and experience. What kind of rewards, though? I mean, I want legendary items, set items. Big rewards. Endless mode can now be played at any time. In this mode, warbands will receive a score based on how many heavy hitting waves of demons they can survive. This mode is an occupying leaderboard. I love it when they provide a leaderboard for mini games. I thought the fractured plane should have had the leaderboard. So you can see how the warband stacks up to others. Additionally, the top warbands will receive a portrait frame. Oh, that's kind of nice. Like a cosmetic that doesn't really change the balance of the game, but you get something nice for your effort. Let's see here. Ancestral weapons. Oh boy, this looks okay. This actually looks like a whole thing here. Um, Look at that, strength, intelligence, willpower. Let's get into this. So purging the depths and defending it from assault yield valuable rewards. While participating, you have a chance to find ancestral weapons. Harness the weapons and place them in the tableau, which is this thing it looks like, located in the castle. Once placed, the weapons will confer a portion of their attributes, such as strength, intelligence, and vitality onto all members of your warband. Wow, each member can only place one ancestral weapon in the tableau, okay. So this is like shared stat. This is a pool of stats. That's actually nuts. So work together with your fellow warband member to assemble the best weapons you can find to power up the warband members. The action of placing the items in the tableau and providing a portion of the attributes to all a warband uh, does not require anyone else but yourself to be online. Okay, they're really doubling down on you can do this stuff alone. You So far, everything they mentioned except just the normal raids we already know about, you can do alone and they lower the raids to four. That's highly important to me. In addition to the bonus attributes, you can also call, and I know it's attributes or whatever, people always roast me the way I say things. I'm sorry, okay? There's nothing I can do about it except actually do it correctly, which I'm not going to do because I'm lazy. You can also call upon special powers from the warband and search for weapons while donning invocation gear. Okay, wait, hold on. You can also call upon special powers while donning invocation gear. Is this like a new skill? While participating in the activities, gear that drops has a chance to possess an additional property. Gear can be equipped to your characters in its respective item slot to receive the benefit and trigger the ability of the weapon. Mix and match your gear with the ancestral weapon of your choice to further maximize your customized build. Okay, so this is getting complicated. This sounds like whole new build stuff. For example, your weapon might provide the property deal lightning damage to surrounding enemies when combined with an invocation such as chance to trigger your properties when you deal damage. Okay, I get it. So you have a thing that does something, and then you have a thing that tells you when it does that thing, basically. It results in the combined ability, chance to deal lightning damage to stranding enemies when you do damage. Okay, so you have two ways of modifying. You can modify how it triggers and what it does when it does trigger. Uh, I kind of like that. That's going to give us some variability in builds. We're going to have to see exactly how big this is. This could be as small as reforged bonus, and this could be as big as set items. I mean, this could be like a massive way of changing builds we don't know yet. Let's look here, season five battle pass. So we're gonna have another season five. Uh, new and special offers receive, what is this? Receive select news events and special offers. That's probably if we want to get into the D4 beta, I would think you probably are gonna want to do this uh, except special offers. Uh, let's see here, sanctuary, believe that the sheer power of the squall. Okay, so this is just all some lore stuff related to the battle pass five. Let's not go into this too much because this, I mean, it's, it's a battle pass, okay? We've already seen what science of the storm is gonna look like. Not a big deal. I think this got leaked already. It just kind of looks like some lightning armor here. Collector's Battle Pass. It runs until October 26th. Whatever. There's a new Battle Pass coming. Not a big deal. Uh, moving on to the next one. New Heliquary Raid. Is Lectium Misshapen. Okay, so this is also got Day of the Mind of 6175. Seems to be the correct number here. Uh, what does this actual reward do? It gives you 10% movement speed while inside Challenge Rift. So this guy's a movement speed buff, which is actually pretty good, okay? Especially people like Demon Under the Move while attacking. So we have two smaller updates, which is the Battle Pass and then a new Heliquary uh, boss, and most of us aren't going to be fighting for a while. Here we go. Limited time event. Sco uh, scoring the Darkness, okay? The mist surrounding the Silent Monster and the Castle Maya faded but now you find yourself lost the, the scoring the darkness for a path forward twisted beans promise 
promising curses for the weak and power for the worthy, tempt you to push you further. Who knows if insanity or glory is waving? Okay, so what do we actually get for this? Uh, let's see. Band together with your war band or slay with your way to safety alone. Thank God you can do it alone. As you complete tasks and a variety of rewards, including the congratulations emote for your quick with a bravery be back the shadows from september 28th to october 19th so we have another uh looks like almost that's yeah, three week event and we'll get in the moat as a reward i wonder if actually killing the monsters itself give experience from what i remember i thought it was day of the mind that this event in particular actually had bonus experience and this was supposed to be the new best way of farming experience i don't know if that day of the mind's accurate or not i don't know anything about that Okay, what's going on? Hungry Moon looks different. Hungry Moon back for seconds. So one of my feedback to them of the Hungry Moon was that um, you essentially can't get all the rewards or you can't choose the rewards and that if they're going to do kind of a basic event like this, then you should run it all the time. And that's kind of what they've been doing. They've just been repeating it because it's a free legendary crest the way I see it. Despite your best efforts. Okay, so this is just lore stuff again. Uh, let's see. Here, uh, players can compete up to three tasks a day starting October 6th to the 10th server time. Through completing tasks, you'll gain power. The power can be used to draw one, two types of blessing. Okay, so you can get two blessings now. Blessing and magic will give you a bonus to magic fine. Oh, interesting. And blessing and might invites you to completing a dungeon in exchange for moon silvers. If you complete the dungeon with a party, twice the amount of moon silvers shall be bestowed upon you. And the moon is a generous entity, so you may have one of each blessing at a time. Okay, so they're just buffing the hungry moon to make it a little bit better. Once you've racked up a handful of moon slivers, visit the Hermit's Collection located within the Hungry Moon event page to trade your moon slivers for lunar laced rewards of your choice. So this just, just seems like a small buff, nothing major, might be a little bit easier to actually get done, and it looks like they're giving some sort of free-to-play temporary magic find buff. Not really a big deal. Uh, let's move on here. Crowned One Cosmetic Set. That actually looks pretty good. I actually like that. Kind of the gold and red with the crown. That's not bad. New cosmetic set. And then it looks like some bug fitch it, uh, fixes here. Not fitches. That's a that's a uh, bird, isn't it? Finches. That's what it is. Uh, new legendary gems. Ooh, new legend. Oh, there's multiple legendary gems. Oh, boy. Three new legendary gems have been added. For three weeks after release, players will have the option to enable a modified drop table for their legendary crest. With the modified drop table enabled, any time a five-star gem drops, it has a 50% chance to be the new Frozen Heart. Okay, so the banner is, in fact, correct. Here we go. Blessed Pebble one-star gem increases the duration of beneficial effects on you by 12% and increases your movement speed by 8% for three seconds after gaining a beneficial effect. Three seconds? Um, I wonder if these numbers are modified, like the three seconds, the 8%, and the 12%. These might be the max rates on this but this is a one star gem this strikes me as quite good for a one star beneficial effect from what i understand doesn't have a cap on it um and it this increasing your movement speed by eight percent as well some people think there's a 30 percent cap but there's this guy named and shout out to fo elite uh, diablo more though he's a youtuber and um he does some pretty good stuff where he actually goes and does quite a bit of work looking into these uh gems and the way stat uh bonuses and stuff work and I watched one of his videos that said there is actually zero cap or, or diminishing returns on these beneficial effects, which is interesting. Um, the Abiding Curse two-star gem, your attacks have a 15% chance to curse enemies, reducing their attack and movement speed by 35% for eight seconds. That's quite good if it triggers off basic. Cursed enemies also take 10% increased damage from your attacks. Wow. Cannot curse the same target more than once every 20 seconds. Um, it's not bad. Actually, eight seconds out of 20. Uh, that's not too bad that for a 10% increased damage for a two-star gem, kind of like that. And then we have the five-star gem, which is Frozen Art, the one that was Day of the Mind, activates a frigid shield for six seconds that chills enemy attackers and absorbs damage equal to 360 plus a base amount. It also grants your attacks a 60% chance to chill enemies. Chill can be all right. I find it to be interesting i i don't like things typically that are defensive gems i think this might be better in pvp than it is in pve like if someone starts hitting you with a continuous damage type thing like a mage or whatever and then they start getting chilled and it slows their um attack speed or whatnot it could slow their animation etc from what i understand let's keep looking here um new set items so here we go with the new set we actually get the actual stats set items provide powerful synergies um our newest set uh, Gloom Guide's prize is centered around using the dash skills to accommodate the addition of the Silent Monster and provide players with more variety in their specific sets. We have shuffled the drop locations of all of our sets. Dude. 
all right i i don't want i don't want to be i don't want to be bummed out in a video that's a cool update so i'm not going to rant about this but set items are difficult to acquire my friends and moving the set items around doesn't make it easier in my personal opinion let us just farm this set out of one dungeon would have been a w but whatever uh increases your damage done by 15 percent for three seconds after using a dash skill that's good uh increases your critical chance for there doesn't seem like there's a cooldown on this increases your critical hit chance by 22 percent for three seconds after using a dash skill that's good unleashes a wave of terror when your dash skill ends dealing x damage and causing nearby enemies to flee in fear for three seconds three seconds pretty long fear wave of terror will only trigger when enemies are nearby but cannot occur more often than every 40 seconds that's nice it only triggers when enemies are nearby so if you're dashing to get two enemies it's not going to happen until you're on an enemy that's a very good quality of life addition. I like that thought process going forward. Legendary Crest Improvement. After completing a Warband Raid, players can now 1,600 Platinum for one Legendary Crest. is going to be done once a week. 200 Platinum for Rare Crest is going to be done three times a week. No one's ever going to do this. This is a waste. Save up your Platinum for the Legendary Crest. Might as well not even have it. I, I thought maybe it would be an actual Legendary Crest Improvement. Question. How is this a Legendary Crest Improvement um, if it didn't change anything for Legendary Crest? Because we could already trade 16 or platinum for an eternal legendary. If this guy, in fact, if this went from eternal to normal legendary, this was actually a nerf. Um, this is this was already in the game. So this isn't an improvement at all. The only thing you added was a rare, this is a rare crest improve, improvement, which is, again, doesn't do anything. Uh, we, maybe there's something I don't understand. Provide players with additional ways to use platinum. We'll also provide more ways for players to earn legendary crest in the game. For rare crest, we receive small mat, uh feedback the players do not always have a worthwhile use for small amount of eternal orbs this change allows players to provide an outlet to spend small amounts of leftover eternal orbs as one eternal orb can be traded for 10 platinum i oh so this is so if you have 20 eternal orbs you can get a rare crest okay i get that logic i just i guess if this was titled like eternal orb improvement i would have been like cool cool but um this doesn't really make sense for me as the title. anyway let's continue Immortal Rain, defend the vault improvements. We're improving the Moro's defend the vault experience by using the queuing system. Yep, this should have been implemented from the get-go. Um, took a bit to get there, but we have one now. This is actually a pretty good improvement, to be honest. I wasn't aware this is coming to the game at all. I didn't see this in the data mine. I wasn't mentioned to this at all. Um, maybe I did and just I, I forgot about it or don't remember somebody telling me about this, but this is actually like kind of a big deal if you're in Immortal. Uh, Corvus Expedition variants. This is great also. The Corvus Expedition is borderline worthless and boring. Like, you only really do it if it counts for activity, and that's just because you're paranoid about counting for activity, and there's not really any reason to do this. Let's see, evolving the uh, expedition to feel unique is our goal. It's not going to feel unique, but but I, I do appreciate the sentiment of them adding variety. That is nice. Hero's Journey additional chapter. That's cool. Um, Glorious Journal Portal Cosmetic. That's cool, too. I like cosmetics. I think cosmetics go a long way to, like, adding achievements in the game and stuff to work towards. So I'd like to see that additional chapters. New Bestuary Entries. 20 new entries. Considering you can reroll the same entries, adding more entries will make it easier to get other kitty. What the? What is going on? Hold on. Okay, grand market adjustments, time frame which players can buy any items has been reduced from 12 hours to 3 hours. Very nice. They listen to this. Time frame in which players can resell items has been reduced from 7 to 2 days. Okay, so this is a change to being able to play the market, essentially. And now that uh, the negative orb cheaters have been dealt with, this is probably something that they can realistically start dealing with. Um, so I like that change. Eternal Bundle Update, 315 for five dollars has been changed to 320 for five. 630 has been changed to 650. Okay, so this is this is to stop the annoying thing of like, oh, you're just like a couple eternal orbs short. Because I always thought it was kind of like like I don't think they actually did it on purpose where it's like, oh, you're 20 orbs short of a legendary crest. Guess you have to spend three dollars. Cause they're busy farming like hundreds of thousands of dollars. Like they're not trying to nickel and dime everybody. That's normally would not with it. It's just probably like bad math, bad marketing. This could be me being naive, sure. But I always thought it was kind of like I didn't think it was on purpose. And they're actually changing it here. Um, so you know what, guys? Here's the deal about this major update. There's actually kind of a lot in here. Um, there's a minor update mixed with a major update. Like, if we actually scroll up here and take a look at this. So, Silent Monastery, new dungeon. That's a major update. The new Ancestral Weapons. That's entire new builds. We have the new, uh, the new event here, which seems pretty cool. We have a uh, completely new... What else? 
What else is completely new here? Feature updates. New legendary gems. Okay, we got new legendary gems. New item set. This is doesn't really matter. This was nice. So it looks like we got a mix of like quality of life infrastructure and some new stuff. So if we're talking like infrastructure stuff, it's the stuff like the immortal rain change, the warband changes are nice. I think something to mention here is we're gonna get a lot of like, I'm gonna mention this in the video because I think this is what people are gonna see a lot of, which is that this castle is really like the big, the big change from what I can tell. And this is pretty much a warband thing. Warband right now is not in a good spot in terms of how the community is feeling about it. So I think this is going to get roasted, in my personal opinion. But something I want to say is that they actually made it where we can do all this solo. Like, if you notice, it said you can do it as a warband, but they mentioned multiple times. This part, you can all do solo. The defense, you can do... Like, every part of the new stuff, we can, in fact, do solo. How that's actually going to realistically logistically play out like if you actually like oh i can do it solo the same way like i can do dungeons with two people but you know it we're not really going to do it because it's not the way the game's set up um that's what i imagine it is if i had to be honest i'm kind of excited for it though because this other part here this ancestral weapons i want to know if just getting these huge huge weapon upgrades with these other builds is this like such a big deal this is essentially like having new set items because if this is true then we have new set new bonuses which have new effects almost like reforged bonuses with bonus stats and this this is pretty meta changing uh and this is a pretty meta changing deal right here we got to see what's going on but this is like major so this could uh, change a lot of things in terms of builds, etc. We don't know all that's coming to the game for this part. That is, in fact, a major update, though. Um, a lot of the new stuff in there. Kind of excited. Let me know what you guys think. Um, we won't know until it's in the game. I think the pain point for people is going to be the warband thing. They definitely have a lot of warband-related content. So the execution of how well they manage that warband is really going to be the most important part, I think, once the update arrives in the game. But it's arriving fairly soon. So for me... Thumb up on some of this stuff, little concerned about some of the other stuff, but we'll see how it plays out as the game gets going.